美中技术脱钩这一概念进入美中关系主流政策讨论不过几年时间，但卡内基国际和平基金会研究员乔恩·贝特曼认为，技术脱钩在奥巴马政府末期就已经开始。虽由美国政府主导，但中国近十年来的种种侵犯在客观上促使了这一脱钩。贝特曼主张，美国需要拿出精准的政策方案，在脱钩的过程中避免伤及自身。美国之音近期对贝特曼进行了专访，我们请记者许宁来介绍专访的主要内容。许宁，是贝特曼最近发表的报告《美中技术脱钩战略和政策框架》，在美中关系的学术界获得了许多正面的反响。贝特曼既反对过度强化美国政府对中国科技公司的限制，也不认可盲目扩展美中技术合作。至于脱钩的起源，贝特曼说。美国政府是两国科技脱钩最初的发起者，但中国在这场脱钩中也负有不可推卸的责任。科技脱钩如何走到今天这一步？我们来听听他怎么说。Well, it's a complicated story because although the U.S. and China are very technologically and economically integrated, they've never been fully integrated, and the Chinese government has long had its own barriers on the use of U.S. technology within China. So China plays a role in the limits on U.S.-China technology interaction.、Uh, the Great Firewall would be the most well-known example of how a number of years ago China decided that the kind of content and applications that exist in the U.S. internet and the broader Western world would not be tolerated within China itself. However, as we move closer to the 2000s and 2010s.、Uh, Technological integration on many fronts was still continuing in full force, and it was really the United States, in the late Obama administration and especially the early Trump administration, that initiated the current wave of technological decoupling, which means government policies designed to reduce interdependence between the technology ecosystems of both countries. Now, the motivations for doing so in the United States were, in large part, based on changes in Chinese behavior.、Mm-hmm. Uh, American policymakers had once been ambivalent or even cautiously optimistic about the relationship with China and Beijing's integration into the international system. But during the 2010s, a number of different events occurred that were the responsibility of the Chinese government that showed a different side of Beijing. Um, one was militarization of disputed islands in the South China Sea and the broader military buildup of China. Another was continued intellectual property theft, and China actually using this to move up the economic value chain to become a true competitor in many of the most important and advanced technologies of the coming era.、Uh, we've also seen gross human rights abuses and a deepening authoritarianism under President Xi. Um, and many other encroachments of Hong Kong, Taiwan, Tibet.、Um, so there's a range of many different areas in which U.S. concerns about China have intensified over the last five to ten years, and almost all of these have some nexus to technology. 在采访中，我还问到，脱钩到底是某一个国家造成的不幸的局面，还是美中两国竞争中的历史必然？贝特曼回答说。美国和中国之间在一定水平上存在固有的冲突和怀疑，这一方面与两国的政治制度和社会规则有关；而在另一方面，与美中两国在世界秩序中追求支配地位和权力有关。他说，中国是在由美国和西方盟友制定的国际规则下取得的成功和繁荣，但是随着中国获得的权力越来越大，中国政府不可避免地想要朝着自己的利益改变世界。这就会引发两国的冲突。与此同时，美国非常致力于自由和民主，但同时感到民主制度的脆弱性。在全球范围内，民主衰退也非常的严重，这让美国对中国这样的威权竞争对手的崛起感到紧张，希望防止中国等国家带来的威胁。这也在一定程度上加速了科技脱钩。嗯啊，那么对于美国来说，现在的一个主要的问题是如何来管控这个脱钩的过程哈。呃，贝特曼主张采取一种中中间路线。那么具体什么是中间路线？贝特曼倡导的中间路线呢，主主张以攻为主，以守为辅。
也就是其中精力重点加大国内的科技投入，保持和提高美国的技术领先优势和地位，但是在重点的战略领域对中国加以精准的防范。我们来听听他怎么说。Well, most people in the United States have recognized that a certain level of partial technological decoupling is ongoing with China. But the debate is about how far it should go from a U.S. interests perspective.、Uh, on the one hand, there are those that I call the restrictionists, who believe that the U.S.-China technology relationship is generally harmful for the United States and creates long-term strategic advantages for China.、Uh, this group of people argues for significantly. In、enhancing and strengthening and broadening the restrictions that have been placed on Chinese tech companies and the Chinese tech sector.、Um, then, on the other hand, at the opposite end of the spectrum, are those that I call cooperationists. Those people believe in a global, free technology ecosystem in which scientists, engineers can cooperate freely. Free trade, free commercial relationships. They believe the United States is poised to benefit from this kind of free movement of people, goods, products, and data. And then in the middle are those that I call the centrists, and I identify myself as a centrist. Centrists believe that it's neither a clearly zero-sum nor a clearly non-zero-sum relationship. And in fact, it's a complex technology relationship with mixed cost and benefits for both sides. What this means is that some level of partial decoupling is necessary, but it should be very carefully managed and done incrementally, piece by piece, based on cost-benefit analysis of specific technologies that are seen as strategic and sensitive and must be protected, while allowing room for probably most of the technology relationship to continue in non-sensitive, non-strategic areas. I argue for a centrist. Position in large part because of uncertainty.、Uh, it's very unclear how some of these emerging technologies, like quantum science, 5G, machine learning, advanced drones, how all of this will change the global economy, the global political order, and international security affairs. At the same time, the U.S.-China relationship is itself in the beginning of a very uncertain and fluctuating phase. So. I would argue it's unclear how much of the technology relationship with China we will want to retain over the long haul. That means the best bet is preserving and expanding American options. So a careful, incremental, centrist approach can allow the United States to buy time to assess the situation, continue to invest in its own technological strength and well-being, and that will hedge against a variety of different scenarios. 嗯，那么中国又是如何来应对美国发动的这场科技脱钩的呢？贝特曼说，中国希望继续保持和西方的科技联系，同时希望建立自己的体系。但是在过去几年，随着美国对中国施加的技术限制越来越多，中国也做出了相应的回应。比如说，当美国加大使用实体清单之后。中国也制定了自己的所谓的不可不可靠的实体清单。当美国开始对中国实施更多的出口管制时，中国也创建了新型的出口管制措施。贝特曼说，其中的一些做法只是为了挽回北京的面子，并且表明中国在面对美国的举动时也可以采取强硬和对等的态度。但是中国的做法缺乏美国制裁那样的力度。随着时间的推移，贝特曼说，中国会采取更积极和先发制人的行动，在有必要的情况下，以自己的方式先发制人的进行脱钩。美国之音对贝特曼专访的全部内容呢，已经刊登到美国之音的网站上，也欢迎观众和听众到美国之音的网站浏览。好的，谢谢许宁的连线报道。